Hi, I'm Tyson Franklin, and welcome to this week's episode of Podiatry Marketing. With me, as usual, and he is here every single week with a big smile on his face. You can't hear his smile, but I reckon you probably can hear his smile. It is big Jim McDonald. How are you doing today, Jim? Uh, I'm doing fantastic, Tyson. Things are good here in Montreal. So, Jim, what are we talking about today? Today, we're going to talk about what is your marketing system. And I think uh, hopefully people will take you up on that offer, though, because I think bragging rights is super important. And being that the first podiatry marketing live is huge. But as we jump in today, we're going to really talk about what is the what is a marketing system and kind of what are some ways to execute that system? Because I think as we've seen in the past, when people are trying to piece together some marketing activities, but not really have clear objectives or goals with it, a lot of time that's going to fail. So I think it's important that people step back and understand you know, what they're currently doing and, uh, and maybe try to implement more of a syst- systematic approach to what they're doing as opposed to just uh, shooting from the hip. I think that it's so important. I think any marketing that you're doing, there's got to be a plan in place. There's got to be a the plan. Or what is it you're trying to achieve? What plan are you putting in place to actually get there? And then ways of tracking and making sure that you're on track with the plan. You're not partway through it and then you get shiny bright lights and next thing you go off in a different direction and you let something well you stop doing something that was actually working but you weren't you didn't have a system in place to make sure that it was everything everything and everyone followed through to the end no exactly if you're just just piecing it together and shooting from the hip you're, you're not really sure what's working and what's not working so there's some different ways to approach it and i think these kind of systematic uh, ways to approach it will help people in different levels of practice right maybe you're just starting out maybe you've been practice for a long time but people make a significant investment in their marketing. And, the, and in order to do so, you really need to know what, like what you're getting yourself into and how you're approaching this problem or this opportunity, I would say. Yeah, I think what's interesting is sometimes you can be in business for a long period of time and you get set in your ways and your business is going along fine. You get to the point where you think, oh, I'm untouchable. Things that you used to do or systems you used to have in place, you just forget about them. And then, you're, and then they wonder why the new guy comes into town. It starts kicking their butt. It's important to me, like you're saying, they had the systems in place, but just keep them going. And even if you take your foot off the pedal a little bit, you've got somebody else in your team that keeps the foot on the accelerator and just keeps it going. But they need to know what it is they're supposed to be doing and what they're supposed to be looking for. No, exactly. I think it all kind of starts with what do you want more of in your practice? What do you want less of in your practice? That's where that all begins is understanding that. And then if you're willing to take action on those things, like word of mouth is going to be helpful, but there's other ways to really facilitate visibility for your practice and how you do that is that, like I said, what are those goals and objectives you have related to getting more of that care you want to provide or less of specific type of care? What are your objectives? And then what are you willing to invest in it? And then who's actually going to be doing the work? Because it can be you, it can be somebody else, it can be a mixture of the two, but it's until you have those ducks in a row, you're going to find kind of a, a cycle of dissatisfaction or uh, feeling like things aren't working because one of those pieces of the system is out of line. And I think it's really important to, like I said, get those ducks in a row so you can really try to market at a highly effective level as opposed to just... Yeah. If somebody doesn't like marketing though, they go, I just don't like marketing. It does nothing for me. I don't enjoy it. I want to be busy. I want to have a good business, but I have no interest in, it. <laughs> in actually the marketing side. I don't like it then they are better to find somebody else to do that for them. Yeah, for sure. There's three main kind of ways that people can go about the execution part. I think before you execute, though, you just need to understand, like I said, what do you want more of, what do you want less of? What are those concrete goals? Is it 100 surgeries, 100 buddy nectomies that year? Is it 100 pairs of orthotics per month? What are some more concrete goals or ideas you have? And then, like I said, what are you willing to invest to get there? What is the return on a hundred new pairs of orthotics a month or doing more of a specific type of care. So having a general budget that you need to invest. And then, like you said, then it comes down to execution. And the real three types of execution we talked about is that either you DIY it yourself, it's a kind of a hybrid approach where you do some of it yourself, and then you also bring somebody on, an expert to outsource it to an agency or kind of a yeah. consultant. But yeah, different people are going to be at different levels as far as from a budgetary standpoint, a com- like a comfortable or knowledge standpoint, what's going to work best for them. And we'll, we'll get into each of these systems to talk a little bit more. Oh, well, dive in, D- dive into each of them. Just dive <laughs> straight in and start explaining them. Yeah. So the first obviously is the kind of do-it-yourself marketing, right? So 
This is probably best for someone that's just getting out of residency, needs to understand the lay of the land, what's all out there. There's different ways to learn about this. So you can look up Tyson's basically published some great videos and has a lot of blog posts uh, about marketing. I've written some as well. If people are listening to this podcast and want more specific, you know, relatable topics or bl other blogs and video series, we're happy to share those. There's a lot of stuff that can be helpful. I'd also say there's a lot of information that you can also drown in the fire hose of information too. And some of it may not necessarily be totally some of the online marketing things you find either on YouTube or on through Google and may not relate to a medical practice or to podiatry practice. So yeah, you have to be discerning. But like I said, if you're just starting a practice, the, you're trying to be as cost of the DIY marketing. The cons of DIY marketing is that it can be really time consuming, right? If you're, while it can be helpful to maybe go introduce yourself to some local practices and other folks, that's time out of your clinic. So if you're starting to ramp up, maybe it's something that it can be a little tough to maintain if you're only the only person doing this. Also, it requires marketing knowledge. And I said, sometimes you don't know what you don't know, meaning that, yes, there's all the stuff out there about marketing, but What's actually the cost effective things that are actually going to drive results to your practice? So I think it can be helpful to educate yourself and know about it. But sometimes, like I said, sometimes you don't know it's working and it can cost hundreds or thousands of dollars yourself going through failed experiments before you get to that. And sometimes you may not learn enough to actually be successful and you spend hundreds or thousands of dollars. That's one of the cons of DIY marketing. But like I said, there's the ideal scenario for implementing this DIY marketing, like I said, is probably someone just getting started. There's definitely ways that you can bootstrap some of these things. I definitely am a fan of, like I said, meeting other clinical providers. There's all kinds of examples we've talked on in some other podcasts in the past, but the DIY is, is that first step. Yeah. What's interesting though, when I said earlier on, yeah, if you don't like marketing, you go, oh, I just have no interest in it. I still think it's something that you need to understand. You still need to get in the game and understand it. It might be like you don't like taxes either but you still have to do them. Exactly. And it wouldn't matter if you said to the government, oh, I'm sorry, but I just don't like tax. <laughs> I don't like how it all works. I'm not participating. Then they will take your house. They'll take your family off. They'll, you're going to lose everything. So you have, you must learn or say, have some understanding of tax and taxation to be in business. So I think marketing, you may not want to do it, but I think it's really important. You understand the concept of what it is that you're trying to achieve from it. So that when you're working, whether you're, yeah, down the track, if, you, if you're not doing it yourself, at least you know what it is that you're trying to achieve. You're not just, some people just put like a blindfold on and they just hope for the best. Yeah, it's surprising, right? It, it can be one of those things where it can be overwhelming to be a practice owner, right? Whether it be being managing your staff or keeping up to date on the latest ways to treat specific conditions. But this whole marketing and, and basically promoting your practice aspect of things can't be slept on because it's something that's no. vital to the health of your podiatry business, right? It's not just a practice you're running. You have to make sure it's a, a viable business. Getting good resources to understand what your options are. And like I said, you don't have to do all the things from the jump, but executing on some things that are going to work. And as we get into this more, like the second step is maybe it's more of a hybrid approach, right? So maybe you want to have someone help you learn what those things are, then you want to either DIY some of it or outsource a portion of your marketing. So this, the pros of this hybrid system, like I said, is this kind of a balance of control where maybe you're, you're bringing someone on to help you a little bit so you can learn things, but you're still maybe not crazy busy in practice so you can spend some time on the marketing side, but you're also gaining some knowledge so you're not feeling like anybody can pull the wool over your eyes. Because I mm. said, it's usually this, it doesn't have to be like either you do all of the marketing or you do none of the marketing. It could be, it's probably best to kind of transition through this kind of into this hybrid system so you can feel like what's out there and you're potentially being a little bit more cost effective than just fully outsourcing from the jump if you can't afford it in your practice. Yeah. And I think that's the important part too, going back to even having some understanding of it. If you're going to then start working with somebody else, you need to understand it so you know they're not going to pull the wool over your eyes. So they're not telling you, yeah, lying to you about certain things. And this may surprise people, but there are some salespeople out there who are not honest. I know that comes as a surprise. People say, no, Sh shocker. You're, oh, say it isn't. What's that? It was for a movie, isn't it? Joe, say it isn't. Do you know what the movie yeah. was? That's, I don't know. It sounds like it was Joe a, DiMaggio. I don't know. It was a movie. It had something to do. They called them the Boston Black Sox or something at the time. And it was uh, oh, eight men, maybe eight men out or nine men out or I don't know. Yeah. Something about a baseball team that 
threw in so many members in the team are taking bribes from the mob people or something like that to throw a game. But not everybody was, only a few of them was. And one of the guys, Joe, who was like, was one of the best. It's all based on a true story. It was Shoeless Joe Jackson. Yeah, and it was sort of like, say it isn't me, Joe, say it isn't Anyway, we got off track. Sorry about that. That's okay. But <laughs> I think it hybrid. is. Like, but I think, it, like you said, it, it's got to be, it's one of those things where there are some cons of the hybrid system though, right? There, it still does require some time in the practice and some effort there on the marketing side for the, for the practice owner or at least someone else inside the practice. And it can be a little bit more expensive than DIY, but it's one of those things where you get what you pay for. So hopefully yeah. you're partnering someone that you know, is helping you not only learn, but also giving you the most cost-effective uh, ways of marketing practice. Okay. With, okay. So they can either do it themselves. So 100% do it themselves, which I think is a good thing, like you said at the start, to start out with. Sometimes it's a cost-effective way of doing it. If your budget, if you don't really have much of a budget, then you're saying hybrid is next. So the next part then is what just outsourcing the whole thing and just getting somebody to do everything for you. Yeah. So once you're super busy in clinic, you don't really have the time to put into the marketing side anymore. You want to focus on you know, treating your ideal patients, being the OR, whatever floats your boat in practice. And you build up a knowledge that where you understand kind of what some options are. You have a general knowledge of marketing. Then it's probably a good time to consider bringing an expert or a consultant to work with you to save you more time so you can bring more additional revenue into the practice with your skill set and let this person use their skill set to create visibility for practice and especially the care you want to provide. Definitely getting understanding what your ideal results are and trying to uh, achieve them. Along with the pros, though, they, there can be some cons. Or like I said, it's going to be a little bit more expensive. If you have mm -hmm. a, a full-time marketing person, hopefully there'll be a, a source of that additional revenue. So it'll come out of that additional revenue they're helping you create. And then you have a little bit less control. It's something where you definitely want to set up time to touch base with your marketer, the person providing your marketing services, whether that's on a monthly or quarterly call reporting, it can be helpful as well to making sure that what they're doing and the budget they're spending for you is resulting in the type of care you want to provide. So that's going from DIYing it yourself, the kind of hybrid approach, and then graduating to uh, outsourcing your marketing and working hand in hand with a consultant or a marketing expert. Yeah. And I think one thing, if you're going to do it, if you're going to outsource the whole thing, it's so important for them to understand what it is you do. And, and you can ask them that question. I'm a podiatrist. Tell me what I do. And because if they are miles off, if, if they, if what they tell you is so far from what it is that you want more of then you need to educate them. Otherwise, they're, they're going to push the marketing down a completely different path to what you're after. And you could end up getting a clinic full of patients you don't want. Yeah, I think it's super important to have that open line of communication. And even when you're, you're onboarding with someone or you're having initial conversations with it, understanding that they know what podiatry is and understand what the kind of marketing objectives are. Marketing a you know, podiatry clinic is a lot different than trying to sell a product online or e-commerce marketing. But you really want someone who's focused on providing lead generation is the way that they'll term it sometimes, helping you generate demand for patients in your practice, not only just any patient, but the right patients to come to your practice. So you want to make sure that someone mm -hmm. has the knowledge and experience to help you achieve the, those goals through those kind of strategies and tactics. Yeah. Have you ever had, a, I've had podiatrists say to me, oh, no, I did marketing doesn't work. Yeah. yeah no, marketing, usually reasons doesn't, marketing that. doesn't work. Yeah. Marketing doesn't work in podiatry. And you're like just in general, like marketing doesn't work or just doesn't work for podiatry. No, it doesn't work for podiatry. You know, oh, okay. I beg to differ. But, and like you said, there could be marketing. It could be the wrong message at the wrong time to the wrong people. Yeah, it can be that. It could be the wrong channel. It can be the, the wrong budget spend. It could be the, like the wrong time. There's a lot of factors that can lead into both success and failure in marketing. And it's a kind of a willingness to kind of experiment and like you talked about in the past, double down on things that we think are, are working, right? But like I said, there's no really one size fits all here. Even though I'm a person who provides this consultant or this kind of done for you outsourcing marketing services for people, I know it's not for everybody. If you're just beginning and practice, there, there might be you know, a website provider that can help you do your website. Uh, there might be little people that can help you along the way, but there's definitely this kind of spectrum of different type of uh, marketing services you can help grow your practice with. And definitely, like I said, finding the right one for you is, can really uh, benefit not only your, your practice, but your patients. And like I was saying before, but 
yeah, wrong place, wrong time, yeah, wrong message and all that. And some people think this is purely just a, an online problem. <laughs> and you'll probably find it's no different when, when we've done marketing talks and I've, you know, I've asked the group, who, I don't, do you know what bowls is? Bowls? It's a sport, I no. guess. <laughs> I think it's a Commonwealth sport. And it's like a black ball that's weighted on one side. It's like half, oh, probably a third of the size of a bowling ball fits in your palm of your hand. And there's a white ball called a jack. Looks like a pool ball, the white ball. And they throw that on this green. They throw it down the field about 40 meters away and it rolls down and it stops. And then you get the black ball and you bowl it down and the ball curves and it's whoever can get closest to the white thing. And you have, I think, four balls each, three or four balls each. So it's called lawn bowls. Anyway. Lawn bowls is like a sport that was always played by older people. A lot of drinking took place, takes place as well. A lot, of, a lot more younger people have got into it. But I would say, so at these lawn bowls clubs, for example, you would be approached by companies who would say, hey, do you want to advertise on the drink coasters that are at the bar? Or do you want to yeah, advertise on the scorecards that are at, yeah, that the, the players use to keep track? So I'd say to people, if you were looking for more runners, you're not going to do your marketing at the local lawn bowls club because people in the UK and Australia know what I'm talking about. Okay. You want to do marketing where there's going to be runners and think yeah. this is what happens with people online too, is they will, whether it's a Google ad, Facebook ad, or they're doing something else online, they're just they're putting it in the wrong place or they're putting it at the wrong time or they're talking to the wrong audience and then they get the shit and they go, Oh, it doesn't work. I'm going to stop. And you go, no, just timing and placement is wrong. No, exactly. You have to go where the, the old adage, where's, what's the best, where do all the robbers go? Or, you know, what, what's bank robbers, so they go where the money's at. So that's yeah, what you have to do. That's why they rob banks. Actress. Yeah. So you got to go where the money's at, right? So if you're a running podiatrist, go where the runners are. If you like to do orthotics or you like to take care of diabetic feet, go where those things are, right? So it's a matter of just, like I said, not everyone's going to have kind of that one size fits all marketing thing. Understanding what your needs are as a clinic, the stage you're at. And this finding the right system for you in your practice is achievable. And like I said, definitely if anyone is listening to the show and is unsure of what they think each of these stages could benefit their practice or they have questions about what does it mean to outsource your marketing, Tyson and I are definitely here to, to answer those questions. So feel free to check out our website. There's a kind of a comment form and we'd be happy to answer any and all questions that come in. So no, I think it's good. And yeah, what I'm enjoying when we're doing these podcasts is you may have education you're getting about the commonwealth and <laughs> i areas. live in the yeah, commonwealth you, now right so oh you do yeah you're in canada so i'm sure yeah. they play lawn bowls in canada oh, mostly cur 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 curling inside in the winter time that, that's the canadian version of long ball lawn ball actually shows. you probably don't have much lawn during the winter time but but you've <laughs> learned about ned kelly and i have yeah and the on that movie that i was talking about before the baseball one john cusack was the main actor in it he played yeah, I think, it's eight, I think it's Eight Men Out with Shoeless Joe Jackson. So, yeah. Yeah. So, I think it was around the 1920s or something like that. But yeah, people should go and look it up. It was a good movie. <laughs> sad movie, actually. It was really sad. It was a very sad movie. Yeah. Watched a good movie the other night. A uh, man called Otto. Haven't heard of that one. Yeah, Tom Hanks. It was a good movie as well. Sad. Another sad movie. No, no, we could drag. Sad movie. All these sad movies are telling our listeners to watch. I watch so, when they listen to us, we're more uplifting. Watch that movie, feel sad, then listen to the podcast and be uplifted. My kids are obsessed with Mary Poppins right now. So if you want to, if you have kids and you want them oh, to sing songs too, yeah. for the next six months, watch Mary Poppins. So. No, I didn't like that when I was a kid. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, God, I couldn't stand it. Even when I was a kid, Mary Poppins go, oh, I can't stand this. It was terrible. I, I think Americans, like, they, the novelty of the voice is enough to, like, keep you entertained for a while. So, Yeah, no, it didn't work for me at all. So anything else you want to add before we wrap up, Jim? But no, your hate for Mary Poppins will we'll end it there on the podcast. But no, it was a good chat and I'm looking forward to the next one, Tyson. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. I'll talk to you again next week. We'll, we'll probably have a little bit more movie trivia as well. So, <laughs> sounds like talk a plan. Talk to you next week. Okay. See ya.